Now, what the point that this has to do with you, the grassroots, understand something. Right now, white power is very concerned. They should be. They realize that this situation happens to be getting worse, not better. The classic, usual, dependable mechanisms of control, they're breaking down. We're not listening to any more pork chop preachers. You're not going to be sending any more boule bootlicks to mislead us. Their stock has plummeted. And the reason that it's plummeted happens to be that there are these agitating voices out here that most black folks, including the young, are listening to. I wasn't just slamming my gums when I was showing you those polls showing that more and more black people, especially young black people, are getting their information from online and not from television. See, white power likes television because they can control that. They can't control this. They cannot control us. So what's happening is they're attempting to take the places where people have chosen to congregate. The three big websites in particular, YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook, and they're deciding we're going to curate these black voices out of existence. Oh, yeah. We're just, anything that they say is going to be a violation of terms of service. Anything that they say is going to be hate speech. Well, what's so hateful about it? You hate white supremacy. That's the hate. And why do this? Because this is a way of trying to let everybody know this is a this is a broad based form of intimidation. They want everyone to see this. That's what white supremacy is classically always done. You got to make some examples to put the fear back in the negros. Because for the last 10 years, last, actually last 13 years, you've had Jason and I on a nonstop jihad trying to make sure that we put a spine back into black folks who would become, truth be told, a largely spineless people. Getting black folks to not just talk back, but fight back. Getting black people to use the right vocabulary. Words are the currency of thought. And if a fool tells you that you need to look for a job, he's telling you stay on the lowest rung of the economic ladder. We were telling you get to the top, and that means you own some stuff. Telling black folks that elections are a business transaction. And that if you do not have a contract on the table before the election date, then you don't go to vote because what you're doing is you're giving somebody something when they've given you nothing at all. We're teaching black folks how to think, how to speak, how to act. And this is not at all conducive to white supremacy's interests. So what we're seeing is we're seeing that now under the cover of, oh, we're going to talk about the post-election and, oh, that mean old Donald Trump, he still hasn't conceded the election. And, oh, we got the virus going around and there's going to be shots being given out while they're doing that. They're also saying, OK, now we're giving ourselves – we hope we've got enough cover where we can start making these new voices of black media disappear. We can make these professional troublemakers disappear now. We're going to start shadow banning them across the board. Everything that they post is going to be – there's going to be something wrong with it. We're going to put an 18-plus restriction on it. We're going to make sure that you don't get notified whenever any of their videos post or whenever their Twitter tweets go up. We're going to make sure that these guys are effectively made invisible. And what's going to happen is all of a sudden you're going to start seeing all sorts of BS showing up in your feed and suggestions. It's going to be a cavalcade, a potpourri of every anti-black and every mid-core casual racist you ever thought of. That's what they're going to be spoon-feeding to you. That's where this is going if you let it. Well, fortunately for them, we've got the new black media to take over for this, and we showed up just in time. 